We are here in beautiful Rock Hill, South Carolina with a fantastic view of the lake. And we've got a home here that isn't experiencing settlement yet, but during the building process, they started to get a sinkhole here. So like a lot of people, they decided just to pour a little bit more concrete into the void. And as you can see, this is that area that they poured additional concrete into. And since then, we've got more of a void here. So about 40 years ago, the homeowner says that some stumps were buried here. Now, in your own home, when you experience foundation settlement, it can be very confusing and frustrating for the homeowner. There's several options. You can either call a structural engineer to come out and evaluate your home, or you can call a foundation repair company. Now, the big struggle with foundation repair companies nowadays is you may get a professional out at your home, or you may get a commission sales rep whose only concern is to sell you helical piers or push piers. Now, without any soil data, we really don't know what the best repair option is. And most engineering firms don't conduct soil testing or compaction testing. So what we're gonna do today is dynamic cone penetration testing. So we're gonna show you exactly what that looks like in this video and how you can get actionable data to show what could potentially happen in the future to your home. Let's take a look. So once again, this is called DCP testing, so dynamic cone penetrometer testing. And what we're basically doing is driving a steel rod that has a cone at the end of it down into the ground to measure the density of the soil. Now you can't see it in the video, but on that rod that we're driving in the ground, that rod is th about three foot long, so it's actually one meter, so three foot, three inches and there's little rings on that rod every 10 centimeters. So what we're doing is we're hitting that rod with a 66 pound hammer that's run with hydraulics and we're counting how many blows from that hammer it takes to drive that rod every 10 centimeter section. We log that and then later on we can take that data and we can actually show the homeowner the density of the soil at every depth. So when we did the one on the outside, after we got about three foot in the ground, we found about a six foot void that basically either had very loose soil in it or a massive open void, likely a combination of both. So we have to hold that DCP machine fairly plumb, meaning straight up and down, because we don't want that rod to go side to side too much. and it may look like I'm doing nothing. Basically, I'm not doing anything. I'm just using my foot to actuate that pedal, counting the blows from the hammer, and then documenting that every time. Now, I do want to remind you guys, I mentioned earlier that if you have foundation issues, you really have two options. Either call a structural engineer directly, or you can call a foundation repair company. Now, I always advise people to involve a structural engineer, especially if you're going to install helical piers or push piers. You're not necessarily required to have an engineer for polyurethane injection, but I always advise that you should involve an engineer. It's just the best practice. However, most engineering firms do not do soil testing, and the ones that do are typically gonna do core sampling and send that off to a lab, which is very expensive and doesn't often show you uh, the level of compaction that's in the soil. So DCP testing is great because it's a little bit less invasive. It's definitely more cost efficient and we can actually give you some data on the compaction of the soil. The one thing we can't give you is the organic makeup of the soil. So we're not sending samples off to a lab with this specific test. But I do want to say 
this is very important because if you call a foundation repair company, you're probably going to get a full commission sales rep and their only goal is to sell as many, as many helical peers as they can. Now, I'm not saying that helical peers are a bad repair. Actually, they're the best repair option for foundation repair in many cases. But you should be careful because you never know who's actually coming out of your home, what their background is in foundation repair, how much experience they have, or what their actual goal is. Is the goal to help you as a homeowner or is the goal to make a big sell so they can make a big commission? Now, we drove these rods about 20 foot in the ground. We can go up to 30 feet, uh, but usually 20 foot is about the depth that we're gonna hit some pretty dense soil. And as you can imagine, getting that rod out of the ground is no easy task. So our machine actually has a hydraulic rod puller so what you're seeing right now is us pulling that rod out of the ground. You see Chris in the green shirt. He's putting a clamp on it. Once we get it clamped, I'm actuating the pedal in reverse. And we're just pulling that rod out of the ground, uh, making sure that we don't accidentally drop the rod back in the ground as we're taking that lead off because we will never get that rod back. We have finished our DCP testing and I want to show you how we document those hammer blows on the machine and how we're going to translate this to actionable data. So if we look at the sheet, we'll notate the date, who the technician was, the street name, and the location of it. Now this is for field work, it gets kind of dirty, we'll put this in a much cleaner format later. So we have our one meter long rods and there's dashes on that. Every dash on that rod is 10 centimeters. So for every 10 centimeter section, we're measuring how many blows of our 66 pound hammer it took to drive that 10 centimeter section in the ground. So when you see WH here, that means weight of the hammer only. So on the left corner of this house, we went seven 10 centimeter sections just with the weight of the hammer not even striking the rod. And then we hit a little bit more soil and Progressively as we went through, it took more and more hammer strikes. Now once we get to that 20 hammer strike mark, we're hitting very dense soil. We really don't have to worry about settlement in this section. Now this was the interior left corner of the house. And as soon as we got through the first two foot, we were hitting relatively good soil. Now this was the exterior left corner of the house that we saw had a huge void to begin with. Now. We had to get through a little bit of gravel that's been added to the area, so it was pretty stiff here. And then as soon as we got three foot in, we went another six feet in the ground just with the weight of the hammer, not even striking the rod with the hammer. So with that data, we can accurately tell the homeowner that beginning at three foot and down to six foot, there's either a huge void or soil that's so soft that it's never gonna bear the weight of that structure. So before they pour this slab and before they frame up the house, we need to get this addressed. And frankly, it's a, a shame that they're experiencing this, but the positive is we found it now, we can address it before the home is built, and we don't have to worry about the extremely costly repairs of repairing a foundation of a home that's already built. Hey, we'll see you guys back at the shop. All right, thank you guys for coming along with us for our DCP testing today. I know you probably have a few questions, and the number one question on most people's mind is how much is it gonna cost me? So DCP testing uh, for a small one like we did today for three test sites would typically be around twelve to $1,800, depending on your location. And obviously with the extents of the actual inspection, it could go up to several thousand dollars depending on how large the project is, especially if it was a large commercial facility. 
Now, the second question a lot of people ask is, you know, what's, what's the big benefit? And as we talked about in the video, the biggest benefit is not going in blind. So helical piers are a great repair option. And the reason they're so popular is you drive a helical pier in the ground, you go to bedrock or load-bearing strata, you know you're going to hit uh, some load-bearing soil. Now, the problem is everybody throws a helical pier at a house as the only repair option and doesn't think about the rest of the soil conditions. So what we found out today is we likely don't need a helical pier unless the homeowner wants some added assurance that it's never going to settle. Now, what we'll likely do is potentially one helical pier on the corner with some chemical grouting around the exterior. But the biggest benefit is knowing the actual extent of the problem so we can come up with a repair plan that's going to work, but also balance with your budget. And I would say the third question a lot of people ask is, how common is DCP testing? Now, it's more common than you would think, but most companies have just a man-powered, you know, $800 DCP machine that anyone can order online. The problem with that is maybe you could get two, possibly three foot in the ground. Well, as we found today, that would not have given us a clear picture of the actual issue because we ended up going about 20 feet in the ground and still finding uh, soil that was consolidating. So yes, there are a lot of people that can do it. There are very few people who can do it with the type of machinery that we bring out. You know, we have a gas powered hydraulic driven DCP machine. So we could go 30, 40, 50, even 60 feet, depending on how much rod we have on, on hand. Now here in the warehouse, we typically keep enough to go about 30 feet in the ground. Anything more than that, we're happy to do it. We'll just have to add the cost of those rods into the equation. But I really appreciate you sticking with me on this video. As always, if you guys have any concrete foundation settling issues, give us a call, 803-200-2296. You can visit us on the web at www.trueliftconcrete.com and fill out our form for a free estimate. We'll see you guys later.